Two SNP spokespersons, Stuart Hobson. Right. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I uh, thank my honourable friend from Glasgow Central for securing this important, urgent question? Uh, PPE contracts awarded to donors and cronies without a robust tender process. NHS contracts awarded to a firm partly owned by the Health Secretary. Uh, privileged secret communications uh, between an ex-Prime Minister and the Chancellor, uh, between James Dyson and the current Prime Minister. Uh, I could add a Tory fondness for oligarchs and the allegation of Tory donors funding the Prime Minister's home improvements. And there's no point in the Minister sitting there, part bombast and part Teflon Dawn, hoping this stench of cronyism will simply pass. Yeah, yeah. It's far too late for that. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask, when did this government judge that integrity, probity, transparency and the ministerial code were obstacles to be overcome rather than principles <laughs> to always be adhered to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the Right Honourable Gentleman um, is always a, a, a skilled and gifted rhetorician, but uh, as I pointed out in response to uh, his colleague when she raised this urgent question, if you look at PPE, the processes by which PPE have been procured by this Government have been independently validated and assured by officials an eight-step process in order to ensure that contracts were only awarded to those who could provide the right equipment, and there's no variance in the approach that this government took to the approach that the Scottish government or the Welsh government took in the procurement of PPE. Um, he talks about a Tory fondness for oligarchs and he makes reference to uh, text messages and so on. Well, uh, I, I can only point out um, that uh, our mutual friend, the uh, Rural Economy Secretary in the Scottish government, dined with Mr Lex Greensill and Mr Gupta um, in, I think, one of uh, Glasgow's finest uh, restaurants. Uh, if there is a particular fondness for dining with oligarchs, it is not the preserve of any one individual or party in this House, I might point out. And as for suggesting, as for suggesting that the ministerial code is something to be got round or overlooked, and suggesting that propriety might be something that needs to be looked at, I would simply refer him to the report of the Independent Committee of the Scottish Parliament into the investigation into the former First Minister. If people want to see a story of obstruction, obfuscation, prevarication and a waste of taxpayers' money, they can find it there. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Does my right honourable friend agree with me? There's only one party in this House that stands guilty of ignoring votes in a parliament to which it's, re it's responsible, that withholds legal advice, that spends thousands of pounds trying to cover its backs in a botched court case, and that its leader has been found guilty by a cross-party committee of that parliament of misleading that parliament. Not this party, but the party of the Honourable Lady who brought this question today, the Scottish National Party, the real cosy, sleek cabal that's running Scotland at this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I couldn't put it better myself. Um, but what the, the surprising thing is, how, where, where are the SNP's MPs now? Now, some people might think that turning up, reading out a question, um, and then leaving before the debate was concluded was the perfect definition of a cynical political stunt, um, but I'll leave it for other people to decide.